Hey everyone, Thomas Aarons with Fishing the DMV here with a couple of special announcements. We have finally created a Patreon. Now you can support our show and help us make this thing bigger and better. Some of the special perks that you're going to get is an extra monthly podcast just for you, an assortment of live streams, and you're going to get 5% off all of your orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Starting the first week of September, we're going to have our Monday night live streams as always. That'll be re-uploaded as a podcast on Tuesday, and on Thursday morning, we'll be bringing you a normal podcast episode. Now, once we hit 300 Patreon supporters, I'm going to increase the amount of podcast episodes, three fantastic Fishing the DMV podcast episodes with tons of fishing reports and cool guests, a live stream, and also we're going to be bringing you much more content. But to find out of where we're trying to take this channel, please go visit my Patreon page. I have it listed all of our goals to make this thing the best fishing show in the greater DMV metropolitan area. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. We are here at Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, Sorry about figuring out when we were going to start this bad boy. We just finished up a fantastic interview with John Odenkirk of the Department of Wildlife Resources. That thing will be airing in a couple of weeks here. But, you know, this was a great opportunity. This is something I've been talking about wanting to do more consistently is coming here and doing a bait review. Because every time we do a bait review show, it absolutely just catches fire. Uh, and then also talk to this man here because we haven't talked to him in forever. When was the last time I actually got you on the show? Uh, it was when you and your cousin, I think, were on the show. Yeah, and I interviewed you guys after your great win. Yeah. yeah. Been a while. That's been a real long time. Yeah, missed it. Have you had any, before we get into the base, have you had any fishing adventures that you've been, have done since I, I talked to you last? Yeah, just a little bit here and there. I think, you know, one of the projects we're trying to work on here at Jake's is, uh, you know, everybody always asks us where to fish. Um, so Cole and I have been kind of going around to different places. Uh, you've kind of done similar type segments, but this is going to be centered more around just kind of all the different places that you can fish and um, just, you know, kind of what you'll find there as far as, you know, parking facilities, ramp, is it waiting only versus kayak, canoe, jet boat, you know, things like that. Um, eventually, in re- result or product is going to be a kiosk uh, to where you can, when people come in, you can kind of self go through it or we can take you through it. If you want to do a float trip, uh, this is where you can put in, this is where you take out, this is how many hours you expect to mm-hmm. be, you know, just uh, helping people uh, find different places to fish to have success um because as you see on that map behind you there's there's tons there's a of lot water. of places to yeah. fish and, and then guys please let us know how our audio sounds if you want me to adjust it at all and then can you give us a spoiler way to any place in particular that you you've gone to so the two we went to the cove first and the cove campground and we want to go back uh but they've got some really they have three to four different bodies of water at the cove and it costs a little bit to get in but he he i spoiler here i mean he it's gonna cost a little bit to get in but he said there was trying to think of the number it was upwards of 15 to 20 over six pounds caught since spring up there in that body of water how, so how big uh i th- want to say 30 to 40 acres is the biggest and then he's got another smaller one uh pond and then there's another called beaver pond which has a lot of uh a lot of wood in it um the, the first one you can actually there's no ramp but you could launch a you could launch a boat on that oh that's really cool um trolling motor only type thing but the rest of them either bank fishing or or kayak and the other place we checked out was andy guest state park and so we did a little wade trip you know for those that maybe don't have a boat an area that you can wade and, and fish and i talked to two guys today that say in the fall here that the the big girls will move up just below you know andy guest state park so just kind of getting you know information out that's one thing you and i've talked about for a information long time yep of just where people can fish and how to get on the water, whether it's a small craft, watercraft, or bank fishing. You've done great segments on bank fishing. You know uh, what's so crazy? I did that episode a while ago with this guy, uh, Mr. Williams, who bank fishes the Upper Potomac. And he talks about how like, we have the CNO Canal that stretches the whole thing. This mm-hmm. is like a great place to yes. bank fish. And there's a lot of people who are clamoring like, thank you for doing an episode about yes. us because I forget. Right. I, I get selfish because I have a boat yeah, or a kayak. Like, right. Oh, yeah. People yeah. bank fish still, too. Yeah. 
Um, but guys, we have a great show for you today. I'm thinking like how we're going to do this is I'm going to show off a bait, then Jared can show off a bait. And if you have questions or comments about specific things, please let me know. I think based on what I have collected here, I am very small mouth specific. So hopefully Jared can balance me out here a little bit here. Um, I'm, I'm going to start. How the hell am I going to start with this guy? It's like a kid in the candy store. So one thing about the upper Potomac right now, there's a lot of, um, subaquatic vegetation, especially up near Algonquian all the way up to like point of rocks. And so one thing you guys could consider, honestly, is a ribbon tail frog. Uh, any type of weedless frog works for you. What's really cool about this is, again, it's completely weedless. You just screw it in with a four-aught uh, a four-aught screw lock hook, cast it out there. This is a fantastic topwater lure. If you usually use a whopper plopper, um, and maybe you're not getting good success with a buzz bait, really try a, a weedless frog. So that's going to be my, my first pick. All right, so you're up. So, you know, I've had on the river, it'll work anywhere too, but the Helgramite, uh, I've got a Nico Helgramite right here. Um, and I've got very fond memories when I went to Shepherd uh, College back in the day, fishing the Potomac. We go to Dam 4 and uh, we actually wade out um, into the water. And, and usually, I, I believe it was September, you know, finding these under the underside of rocks, actually live uh, Helgramites and hooking them just behind the hard casing, just behind the pinchers. And just catching more smallmouth than we could count. Um, but Nico makes a very good product uh, with the Helger mite. And you can rig that with like a little sickle hook, Roger sickle hook, rig, rig it through the head, uh, hook exposed. Or you could wacky uh, rig it. You could drop shot it. Uh, but the Helger mite is just a natural forage in the river. Um, smallmouth are eating this. So, um both August, September, I would say all the way up through October, uh, the Helger might would be a, a very good choice. Now these, the thing about Nico too, you know, it's they they can be a little pricey, but here's what I will tell you. Unless you break off, you're not going to be changing this plastic out. Once you get that on the hook, it's not coming off. I, you could probably catch, I don't know a number, but you could probably catch guaranteed 30 to 40 small mouth or more maybe 50 on here without having to change them out so don't let the price fool you the on plastic that. on that is a very good mm -hmm. it's a hard seller with that because yep. you're going to get a lot of bluegill rock bass little small mouth they're going to be plucking that thing yep. and having that soft because one of my picks here it's basically a one fish wonder and it works good but you're going to be tearing off baits a lot and let's see we got a really good one here. Helgramite is number two uh, bait period. Mad Tom number one. Ooh, Mad Tom number one. Oh, no, you can take the surprise. I'm going to go next. I'm going to go next. So uh, the next one I'm going to have on my Ryan list. Ryan Henry. I'm going to keep with the top water theme here. You might actually have this too. Um, I don't even say what size Rico this is. This is the Rico RC548, the holographic shad. Um, this is a really, really small one. And the other thing that would be good too is the um, the BFS Mega Bass Popper. Uh, which again, Jake's Jake's Bank Tackle also has an available. I just didn't grab it right away. That small style popper is fantastic for the smallmouth, especially if it's early in the morning, late in the evening, to try to kind of really coax them into biting. Not always just speed, but leaving it in that strike zone for as long as possible. So that's another one of the top water front. So uh, I got a comment on this. Brian Henry said the mega bass swim bait on a drop shot. So uh, <laughs> there standard refrigeration every year, we do a little uh, fishing tournament for. Um, for a company tournament and uh just bragging rice put his name on a plaque type thing and he won it last year on the river uh this year he, he jumps right on the board quick with a 17 and three quarter inch large mouth wow. i'm throwing a um little sonar the yum sonar right here um little fish story here for you oh, let me back up yeah so first thing henry we're at, on brown's boat we're standing outside his boat not on his boat yet and I look across Brown's boat and I see this little swim bait. And I'm thinking, what is that? I haven't seen one. So I go around and it is the mega bass. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's a good one. So I throw it across the boat and it lands in front of him and goes over and he looks at it. He proceeds to put it onto his drop shot. He looks <laughs> on his drop shot and he's like, boy, this looks good. And wouldn't you know, that's what he catches the, the leading bass on. Now I come back with this little sonar right here on this hook right here, Roger's little jig hook uh light line six pound test um see one bust along the bank uh, i'm fishing deeper but one bust on the bank so i throw to it hook up didn't have the net in the boat Just pull and drag underneath the boat singing comes up jumps out 
was doing a great job up until it got almost to the boat and I got a little bit too excited, tried to horse it and it came unbuttoned. Mm. I asked the hunter who was with me, uh, how big do you think? He, mm. he said four to five pounds. So I don't know. Didn't get in the boat. So Brian Henry wins with his, his mega bass swim bait on what, drop shot. Way to manipulate the system there, bud. I really appreciate but it. I do like this for a small mouth, large mouth, a little smaller profile this time of year, really any time of year, uh, this will work. Um, and what color? Oh, I, wife says I need to move, a, move the camera closer. I will, but yeah, tell, tell them what color. This is a close. this one's a Tennessee shad. Um, but you know me in color. I think any of them are going to work because I think it's more of the profile. Yeah. I see you have one similar to this. It's just basically that profile uh, is what we're what we're looking at. Um, yeah, it's all about that this. profile with dealing with dealing with these smallmouth because it's so crazy. Like Susquehanna smallmouth are completely different than our Shenandoah Upper Potomac on the size of the forage. I think that they're eating, um, and you know, and that's kind of going to go into what is the next stuff. When we talk about small stuff, this right here is the um, this is called the the Z the Z spender. This right here is your tackle jerk bait. This is a very tiny jerk bait, and I really don't think I'll put my pinky up there just for for some comparison there it's a really small jerk bait for some reason they do not want a bigger jerk bait right now but if you're fishing an area that's a little bit deeper it doesn't have as much weeds a zz splendor your tackle jerk bait or or you, you might have to special order this from jake's but i'm gonna i'm gonna get people mad at me right now the bfs mega bass jerk bait again guys type that in bfs mega bass jerk bait it is the size of my pinky. It's really small. It has that mega bass construction, which is really good. And it's heavy because of that ball system. It has, you can still cast like a mile that intro that you saw my wife launch that fish 280 feet straight up. She was smoking them on that mega bass BFS jerk bait. So that's another really good one right there. Going with that small jerk bait. Let's see. I get, now I got reorganized here. So Tedrick also said there the Helgram right is number two, and he says that the Mad Tom is number one. I also pulled that. A good choice. Uh, for those that don't know, the Mad Tom, just another smallmouth candy mm. uh, for, you know, smallmouth. A lot of people refer to them as a baby catfish. Uh, these are dynamite uh, fit lures uh, is one manufacturer that we have here at Ooh, Jake's. Fit lures. Okay. Then, uh, fishing complete here. Um, but again, fished on the bottom, this natural forage, small mouth, the tail is a little bit different than most tails, uh, but small mouth, it's small mouth candy. Uh, it really so is. using something like this, uh, on the river again, pretty much anywhere, but I'm gonna talk a little bit later about this as a trailer, but Ooh. I would agree, um, uh, Tedrick with that. The mad Tom and Helger might are both very natural, uh, baits. And I'm going to go back to, to the, 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 another top water bait, which is the Jackal. Um, let me move this comment out of there here too. So this is what I think it almost looks like a jitterbug. Honestly, that's kind of what this reminds oh, me of. Yeah. And sure. this is something the pompadour I've been experimenting with. I haven't had enough success yet, um, mm -hmm. to really say a hundred percent buy this bait, but I've caught a couple on it and practiced. And they're like, it's interesting. It's yeah. very interesting. It hasn't won a tournament for me yet or brought a keeper mm -hmm. in the boat. This idea, this concept, I think is perfect for nighttime fishing. If you want to go up to Lake Frederick at night and throw this thing around, I think it can get you some really good bites. Those wings are going to come out, and that thing's going to come. And of, it just kind of absolutely creates number. so much commotion, and it's different. No one's throwing stuff That's like this right. anymore, yep. which is which is neat. I got Looney in the comments section. Mega bass small pop are is money when mayflies are hatching, and that's important when you're talking in your smallmouth waters. Mm -hmm. You know, are they are they keying in on small minnows, mayflies, cicadas, like smallmouth? I think it's so fascinating where you can throw the smallest thing possible and you can catch a 10 pound small mouth. Mm -hmm. You really can't do that with a large mouth. Right. They want something a little bit bigger to right. eat. So I think that's a really, really cool, cool thought there. Let's see. Oh my goodness, guys. I love it. You're keeping the vibes going. What's up, y'all? The crew's in the house tonight. Yes, yes. I'm thinking about, we'll do this show. I want to do this more often, doing these in-person mm -hmm. Jake's things so we can bring tackle in and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'll keep going. If you want to bring so another bait, I'll keep going through. Still Tom. waiting on that boat ride, Jared. Right. Travis we, Cyber. I haven't forgot about you. <laughs> You're on the, on the schedule. <laughs> um, Rogers now, you know, we had a hard time getting to Dave's tournament tackle. Still a great product. But Rogers jigs, everybody knows, we're now he's now featuring his swim jig. Um, and I want to talk about this bubble gum color, uh, you know, and he wasn't sure if that was going to be good or not, but I want to say the mad toms, a lot of times mad toms will have a pinkish color on, on the bottom of them. Hmm. And so again, matching the hatch natural. If you were to put something like this with this tail action on the back of that, on the river, 
that swim jig, I think, is going to be dynamite. I got to give a shout out to Christian Charles. He has been really showing me a thing or two. One of our youth anglers for Frederick County Bass, uh, both at Gaston at Lake Holiday. He is burning those swim jigs and catching uh, smallmouth, largemouth. They're smoking it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be trying more of that this year. Yeah, the, the swim jig is really underrated. The people, um, people are not talking about how underutilized that is. And maybe that's for good reason. You know, when I won big fish and got fourth place on the NVKBA kayak tournament on Sleeters Lake, mm-hmm. where I picked from the swim jig is it, I mean, it doesn't crash through the grass. It doesn't bury itself mm-hmm. in like a chatterbait. It's very stealthily. Mm-hmm. And I think the fish really like that because they see so many chatterbaits. Exactly. And one thing real quick too on Roger that I appreciate is he talking about matching the hatch. He wants to do natural colors. And so, um, he had a perch color. He's got nine different colors, but what do you think about that color right here? Ooh, ooh, guys, look at that that white. That's really good. That almost looks like a, a dirty jigs color. Herring. And you know what's interesting? And He's I had on that one the herring, so it's gonna match a blue herring. And you know what's also cool about these is swim jigs, guys. Believe it or not, will work for smallmouth too. They really yes. will work, especially these smaller versions like this. I'm telling you, the one. At Lake Holiday, it was about literally four to five feet from the boat, and that small mouse smoked it. It was about a 15-inch small oh, mouth, man, and so it cool. just smoked it. So you're exactly right. And again, guys, with this setup here, I would go with a medium-light, extra-fast tip rod. Um, this is more of a mm-hmm. finesse swim jig. As you guys know, I, I talk agnostic about this on older episodes, but 12-pound fluorocarbon to 15-pound fluorocarbon. If you want this thing to fall deeper into the water column, if you're working like a 12 foot grass edge, go with your 12 pound fluorocarbon. You're going to get more depth. Uh, if you want to get it up in the water column, go with your 14. Or if you're dealing with heavier vegetation, go with that 14 pound car- fluorocarbon. But no, this is absolutely money, money. You're going to make a lot of people mad talking about that one. How many? Oh my goodness, guys. I'm going to try to keep up. I know you guys got mad at me. I didn't answer all the chats last time. Looney, a lot of anglers don't use them, but you can catch some good bass on swim jigs in the river. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's it's so funny because like everyone, you know what baits work because no one talks about them. Mm-hmm. It, and I like the idea too. Like it didn't it just now, it recently dawned on me. Like I used the chatter bait or jackhammer. Love it. The swim bait is, is, has the same profile, but you hear about people like whether you want chatter or, or noise or anything like that versus a silent more of a silent and mm-hmm. so it's got the profile of a fish and it's yeah it's it's got a place and it's stealthy i think yes. the, the stealth is so important and we're talking about about stealth and, and smallness guys we're gonna everything i have is so minuscule compared to him so again this is the this is the mega bass junior popper here the same thing that looney talked about here a great bait at small profile it, this time of year on the upper Potomac and the Shenandoah. I really do feel like those fish really like those smaller profile baits going with that BFS setup. That popper can be absolutely successful. I don't have a mega bass swim bait. I don't know. Anyway, uh, where's my next bait? I am so smallmouth centric right now. So guys, I'm going to go grab a large mouth bait. Cause I realized I literally just grabbed all small mouth stuff. Guys, we're almost up to 30. Please like, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps on the algorithm. The best comment here is going to win a gift card. To Jake's bait and tackle. I still have a gift card from last week's live that we didn't do. And then also I had to turn my phone off. We're not doing a call in show tonight. I know I was stupid. I, I put my personal number up there for the last call in show. We're going to do a call in show in the future, but this is not a call in show tonight. Best comment though. We'll, we'll win something. So I want to talk about another of Roger's jigs here. Um, we like Roger because he's been with us since we opened 10 years ago, but more importantly, uh, everything he does is custom. Um, you won't find these at Bass Pro Shop or Dick's or anything like that. Um, a lot of things work. I'm not one to say that what you're throwing won't work, but just something to think about and consider. He's got a micro jig right here that is is dynamite. I don't. We sold out of the – he's got a – I think it's called the – lantern it's a green it actually glows uh more of a chartreuse green uh color on this but he is pouring his own heads hook sickle hook you've heard us talk about this before he's got a a small weed guard right here that you may not be able to see um but this little small profile is going to be great for uh small mouth on the river he's got in a uh, three sixteenths and eight ounce this one's eight ounce uh, but this thing, not just smallmouth, I've had some of my bigger largemouth uh, this summer at Lake Holiday have come on this little profile, uh, put, them a, put a venom, just a small little venom trailer on the back of that. 
Um, and again, I don't get to like, you can do whatever you think is going to work. I don't know that it matters. I mean, you could even do a little paddle tail, uh, but there's something about these small profiles on a, on a uh, spinning setup, spinning rod setup. Uh, let that thing soak down on the bottom, large mouth, small mouth. It does not matter. Again, he's got natural colors, uh, but that, and we've talked before about that sickle hook um, right here. When it, when they, when it sticks them, it's a good sturdy hook and they're not coming off. Thomas talked about small, small profile, not just small mouth, large mouth, especially high pressure. Um, I think when it gets really cold or it's really hot, sometimes their fish will always eat big, but they will also eat small. They're opportunistic. And so do not be afraid to throw small. Um, I've caught big, big bass on small presentations. Okay. So, so sometimes there's there's a place for a big jig as well. Um, I'm not going to say there's not, but sometimes that sometimes you won't get bit big. And now I would suggest eight pound test on this this right here and uh, get your drag set right. And I'm going to tell you, you can have a lot of fun with this small profile small profile jig. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger. If you're working grass and you see a lot of bluegill, going with the Grenada Thunderhawk or anything in this profile is absolutely deadly. Deadly. It mimics a bluegill so freaking well. I personally like to do it with it's either weedless or the lightest split shot, something like that is possible mm -hmm. to have that subtle fall. What makes this bait so awesome is its profile and how it falls in the water. So if you put a big weight in front of that, I feel like it really affects mm -hmm. how it works. Um, and then I will go with it. Those have been very popular. The, these are very hot. And I don't know if it's because Ike's pick, pipping them out so much or if it just works I mean, so well. I mean, are you fishing them alone or as a trailer or I am, you can do both? I, you can do both. And I think what makes this such a cool thing as a trailer is it makes a great skipping platform because it's flat. Correct. Um, but I think alone what makes it so interesting is it's so subtle. If yes. you're If you're fishing like willow grass mm -hmm. on like the res throwing something like this it's such a unique profile that people are mm -hmm. not throwing and it'll give you a little bit of an advantage and you can also turn that on its side i've seen i've seen really? some interesting things too turning this on the side i haven't done it myself but if you turn this on this side it gives you a whole different profile and then also add that to uh say an underspin mm. you know so just yeah that's what i love about it you can throw it this way or you can throw it this way rig it either way carolina rig it I'm just, I'm a big advocate of there's no wrong way to throw it. No. Right. So, I mean, you're going to have your own confidence, what you want, but you what's know, your favorite th way? Think about tweaking it. Uh, probably this way as a trailer. But again, I don't think there's, I mean, you could uh, nose hook it too as a drop shot. Oh, I'm telling wow. you, there's no wrong way to do it. So I didn't I'm even think about this as a drop out, shot. Like, versatility of some of these lures to throw them in a lot of different ways. Uh, try it. You know? I need to think about this as a drop shot, guys. That's a really cool idea. Uh, and with that said, I'm going to get into another, another like hot bait for me that has been really helping out with the, uh, the small mouth derbies I've been fishing. Um, this is probably this, this bait has been, I'm going to just give up the ghost. This thing is probably what's going to help us win. Hopefully this next Thursday nighter, this is the easy shiner. This is the two inch easy shiner. I walk my dog up on the upper Potomac a lot. And if you look in all the, 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 I guess it's like the willow grass there on the upper Potomac of the Shenandoah, mm. there are so many minnows of this oh, size swimming around. Love it. And I really think people don't truly appreciate how small mm -hmm. you have to go to kind of match mm -hmm. the hatch. And I think I have the heads. And like one of my mm -hmm. favorite heads to use for this, uh, these are, I, I just, I just call them the VMC heads, but these are the neon moon heads. This is the one eighth out or is one eighth. No, this is the one sixteenth. This is the one sixteenth ounce head. And you're going to pair that with this two inch easy shiner. Mm -hmm. And I would say put a tap of super glue on there just, just to keep it secure because this is really soft. But this is the most matchy the hatch thing that you can possibly do right now in the river when you're mimicking a bait fish. And it absolutely just smokes them. It really works. Color wise, mm -hmm. there are, these are literally the two that I use. I don't even know the names of them because they're in Japanese. I don't know what a uh, green pumpkin. Oh, I should know that. Oh, it's in small mouth magic. So this mm -hmm. is the green pumpkin one. And this is the small mouth magic. If you're taking a kid fishing, this right here is the best minnow imitator right now. Great choices. Let's see. I got a couple more to go with. So now we're going to get back to the large mouth front. So two large mouth baits that absolutely kill. And I think, uh, yeah, it was already mentioned in the comment section, but I think by Brian spark shad, mm -hmm. can you really go wrong with this thing no. this time of year? This thing on a drop shot is absolutely awesome. Uh, oh, and then we got we got a, we got a couple of questions. Good lord, uh, do do do. Let me get up there. So we got. 
I've seen a few brands of those. Who makes the best? And he's referring to Thunderhawk, this gotcha. right here. Yeah. This type. I think Thunderhawk is like one of the Thunder better Hawk, ones. No, it, yes, they are very good. Um, oh, gosh. What's the other one? Um, not G Crack. Um, what is the. Somebody help us out here. Berk, it's Berkeley? This, no, it's. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Ha guys in the comment section below what's your favorite brand of this help us out here because we're getting old and my brain's not working as much too um we got some other questions here i think did you already answer well, this one oh, sorry guys my mouse is acting weird sorry rogers has mm -hmm. does rogers have a green and purple color hard candy rage crawl trailer is money did you already answer this question he, he does have them i don't know right now he's he's got like three different styles so i don't know um he does like that color and that is a popular color i know in his regular jig uh size good stuff good stuff good stuff and then we got this one here i am at smith mountain i i'm at smith mountain lake for a week mid-september hitting jake's on the way to load up on tackle we appreciate well, that this guy's won a lot of money sitting right next to me at smith mountain lake. That, um, a little bit not well, a lot. what do you think he should buy from you guys to get oh himself gosh ready? i didn't bring it that um Sparky? Okashira. Oh, yeah, put the the Okashira head um, on that Sparky or uh, the other Mega Bass, um, like a little two and three quarter inch, three inch mm. paddle tail, um, and we'll fix you up when you get here. We'll let you know. The um, Okashira spin head, yeah, guys, little spin is head is is really good. But you know, the wacky, wacky's good down there. Wacky's um, deadly. It just depends on who you talk to, but there's a lot of a lot of good options. I, and let me say real quick too, the thing about here is this place i mean everything in here will catch fish literally will catch fishermen but it'll catch and everything in here comes from customer recommendations so uh, we try to stay current on that as to what is working um in a given body of water uh, and try to fix you up with what what will work doesn't mean it will work at that that particular time mm -hmm. and place but um you know if we give a recommendation it's going to be uh from somebody or that has said it's worked or and you guys are so flexible like i mean this is a huge shout out to chris arvin like where he talks about mm -hmm. maybe you should get this in stock That's or something right. like that. so if something is really hot um mm -hmm. they're more than willing to try to get it in the mm -hmm. shop so please make recommendations there's a question there from harvey and he's right and as a good example um we were down at richmond this year oh, harvey uh same right there uh is that some tiger crankbaits i see laying there so we're down at richmond this year mm -hmm. and greg and heidi stanette with tiger crankbaits out of richmond they do a great job uh painting they're doing a lot of different custom uh paints but they're also doing like a lot of traditional blanks that you're going to find um with a lot of different uh crankbait colors and designs uh, they can also do custom now this one as an example um is i put my eyes on here I'll get you to read it for me it's the fat blue crab. Okay. So they're saying on the tidal waters of the Potomac, the James, uh, the Chickahominy, this thing's going to be dynamite. Mm. Um, you were talking about pop bars earlier. Okay. Here's another one, a pop bar. They've got some jerk baits, crank baits. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, they got a, a bigger selection than what we're, we're carrying. Uh, but Ricky Folk, who we've had on the show before, Ricky, he gave us some suggestions and recommendations as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is somebody just pointed that out, Harvey. Appreciate that. But yeah, that's what we that's what's new to Jake's right now. We brought those in. Uh, hope to carry more of those. Reach out to her if you have a favorite color. Um, you can send her a picture of it, and she can try to match it if you can't find it anymore. Because a lot of these places, manufacturers will discontinue colors, and there's nothing worse than having a favorite color at your company. Oh, and they it's. Discontinue it. Dude, it, it sucks. That sucks when that happens there. So again, guys, you know, if there are any questions, please let us know. Uh, we're not going to be going all night, but I'll try to get as many of these questions uh, asked as possible. Uh, 10,000 brand. Yeah, 10,000 mm -hmm. brand is also a really good one. Uh, oh, 10,000 fish. Okay, so that's your crack. That was the one I was thinking. And then, yeah, yep. and then Kendrick G crack. G crack is also a really good one. And then we got, let's see, Nick. Again, Nick, Nick watches the show all the time. Huge shout out. Uh, late to this show, need to go back and watch the smallmouth swim bait setup, guys. I mean, I can show they show you that in five seconds. You get the full spiel later. Um, I like the I like the neon moon head, or if I have it here. I do have it somewhere in front of me. The Kai, is that Kai Tech, Kai Tech, Kai -tech the yeah. Kai Tech, mm -hmm. and the Neon Moon. And this is what's important with these heads, guys. What I think about is getting a super sticky sharp hook mm -hmm. with whatever weight you pick. When you're throwing a small Ned rig um, or you're throwing a tiny swim bait, you're throwing this on lighter line and a lighter rod just so you can cast the thing. 
And so mm -hmm. if you don't have the right hook set up, you are going to miss the fish. It is very important to understand that when you're going with small stuff. And this is important. So for my wife, and I get this is a great segue for this. Carly, great boat yeah. flip, by the way. Don't let me kid you. Yeah, no. Car that was Car a great boat flip. <laughs> The Carly. net man just couldn't catch it coming out of there. He's and been he was a catcher. He was used to being down three here, times. not an outfielder. I, I love that uh Mike of the MVKVA said like the funniest part is like I, that thing hit so hard I shook for a minute because I just thought we got hit by a rock, that That's poor hilarious. little smallmouth. But so I've been messing around fishing these Thursday night um tournaments at Big Slack. We're at Big Slack this week, guys. If you want to join us, 20 bucks for these Thursday nighters on the Big Slack. Um, and I've been experimenting with a, with micro smallmouth baits and Ned rigs. And the important thing really I've been messing around with is the right rod setup. I started with it. I started with a medium rod and it did. Okay, Carly, we're bring, we're Carly says I sent it. She, yeah, she yeah, did. yeah, yeah. You sent that. She's fish just doing good. what she told her to do. Thomas. Oh yeah. That, what's nice. If you, if you throw it high enough in the air, it doesn't flop around the boat when it hits. The only thing would have made it better if it was like a six pounder. If it was, know? yeah, that would have. <laughs> oh my thought. Oh, right. So. Rod, I started out with a medium rod for the swim bait setup, and I was missing them left and right. And I was also missing them on my Ned Rig setup. I went to an ultralight. I had the casting distance, but then when I would set the hook, I had nothing. It was mush. So the mm -hmm. ultralight didn't work. What I settled on is a medium light rod. Any type of medium light rod. I believe this is the old Dobbins. Yep. This is the old Dobbins medium light. This one right here is really perfect when you're dealing with 1 16th to 1 8 ounce. Mm -hmm. And that's important with this swim bait setup. So again, you guys can use any kind of head you want, 1 16th ounce to 1 8th. But the key with this head is to match it up with what I think is that 2-inch Shiner by mm -hmm. Kytec. Again, in that green pumpkin or that smallmouth magic. Super glue it to the hook no matter what because with this small bait, peep, they'll, it, it's really soft mm -hmm. and it'll tend to rip. So I always like to tap it with a little bit of super glue. It really, really helps. Um, and then what do we got here? Okay, when is she going to do a tutorial hmm. on how to boat flip? Uh, yes, she will be doing that shortly. She's more famous than anyone else. When we go to those Thursday nighters, everyone asks where she is. They so do not hilarious. care about me at all. Um, and that kind of gets me into a bait that no one talks about, and I am trying to ruin this surprise for everybody. This is the bait that helped us win a tournament and, mm -hmm. and put some money in our pocket at the Thursday nighter. Great. It's a spy bait. Nobody knows how to use this but me, apparently, on the planet. Everyone says it has to be deep, 30 feet water. No, it does not. This thing will work in shallow water. And spoiler, I've been nagging Jenny about this. Mega Bass has come out with a, or I'm sorry, uh, Dual Realis has come out with a shallow water version of this that I cast. It's not available to the public yet, but a shallow water version. What you can do with a spy bait, you're going to use heavier line. If you're, gonna be, if you're a braid to leader individual, I would say keep your braid, whatever whatever it is, and then go up to 14 pound to 15 pound mono. That's going to give you some lift, but also if you get this thing snagged on the bottom, mm. you can rip it free. Mm -hmm. When I was letting my wife throw this around, uh, she doesn't know this, but she had almost, I think she had 18 pound fluorocarbon as her leader. One is she's a little nuanced, but if she got this thing snagged, which is like you know a mortgage mm. payment, I could just rip it off the bottom, no problem. If you're dealing with someone that has never fished before, this is a swim bait on stupid steroids mm -hmm. because it has treble hooks. They literally just, they reel it right into a fish. Mm -hmm. There's no hook set, which mm -hmm. is amazing. The subtle shimmer of these baits yes. is insane how yes. well it works. The tip I have when you're dealing with smallmouth is you're going to go with the, I think this is the, yeah, this is the 62 alpha spin bait. The 62 alpha is like two inches. It's a little thicker, but the profile, it's shorter. Mm -hmm. You're going to go with, I think it's morning dawn or the chartreuse or the perch color smallmouth like a, a a speck of chartreuse a speck of yellow in it if mm -hmm. it has any of that in that with that shimmy they will go crazy give this a try you will not be you will not be when sad. thomas says shimmy the way that thing's weighted it will when you watch the videos it's going to rock and even on the fall before you start whining if you have any depth at all just let that thing do its thing like do nothing and it, as it falls through the water mm -hmm. column yes if you have suspended yep. bass and then they also say that it is a slow, it's almost, it's a finesse mm -hmm. hard bait or a slow retrieve. You have a prop on the front and the back. And as that thing now kind of just rolls and rocks towards you on a slow retrieve yeah. is, is money. But and, you're and, right. It's, it's a great. And, and the slow is relative when you're fishing this in shallow mm -hmm. water. My suggestion is you got to keep it off the bottom period, but Correct. it will under like 99 percent of the circumstances it'll still do the shimmy yeah you have to reel it a little bit faster in mm -hmm. the shallow water to keep it up and keep i up, right. what i mean shallow i'm thinking 
10 to six feet of water mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine keep it like three feet mm -hmm. under the water column and what's so funny is i do have forward facing sonar now on my boat how many fish will follow this compared to a mm -hmm. swim bait or a jerk bait right. they will follow it at least mm -hmm. it's something about how subtle that is that they love and the guy was going to smith mountain lake that's another so it's also mm. very good for deep clear lakes and yeah so we're high pressure lakes so you're lake frederick or smith mountain lake uh, Moo Mall, places like that definitely have that tied on. It's a good choice. Let me see. I think I got a couple more. You got one. You got one. Oh, so, you got big dogs, don't yeah, you? Yeah. And I'm not in saying this. I'm not one to talk about this because I'm not. I'm not that guy. I'm learning the glide bait, but or the big hard baits too. I'm not afraid to go big. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is something that's new to me. But this is something that's uh the six cents draw glide bait. Okay, and then also the Spro, uh, Chad Shad. We've got these now in stock, uh, four different colors of each of these. And you just got them in stock, didn't just you? Just got them in stock, yeah. So uh, as soon as you come in on the left, what's new, uh, you'll find these here. Um, and there's also other brands as well, but these are new. And so. the Chad Chad is hot. And so I'm here too much and so i know when they first got them in they had a bigger selection of the chad chats and now they have less because that's how this works yes. so if you want to come in here and get them while they're just they're here so you can grab mm -hmm. them you might want to like mm -hmm. get in here pretty soon i mean this looks legit I oh mean, that color the, on that the chad chad's amazing like that's just too good that right there especially guys, as the water gets cooler if you're a susquehanna guy those things and are how are kill. you working this so with, with that right there, I think there's there's two retrieves. You're going to go with that really slow, methodical one, and every now and then you're going to crank the handle. Okay. And so what I like to think with, with a glide bait, um, that fish is going to be sharking it, and he's following it the whole time. Okay. And you're having that slow, methodical approach, mm -hmm. and every now and then you're just going to crank that handle real hard and give it a little, give jerk, it a little jerk, and that's where they're going to mm -hmm. hit. The other way you can do it is just snap, 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 snap. Okay. When you're doing that one, I think it's more your cover oriented. You cast it to a dock, mm. snap, 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 mm -hmm. nothing there, move on. Mm -hmm. A lay down, something like that is very mm -hmm. specific. Whereas I think if I'm covering a weed edge or something mm -hmm. like that, or a, a really sh rocky point, I'm doing that slow, methodical moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. And every now and then I'm going to put in a chop mm -hmm. to it as well. One thing, one caveat to those things, if you're fishing musky bodies of water, make sure you up your game with whatever tackle do mm -hmm. not throw that on a medium heavy rod on fluorocarbon on mm -hmm. musky fishery because mm -hmm. it will go bye-bye right but and with that said too i was going to say i have messed around with the bull shads you know buka bull shads and stuff and i am and that's another one at smith mountain lake along the docks uh just when you those these will draw fish out when you talk about like they'll show you the fish that are in there whether they eat or not it's another story mm -hmm. but and don't be afraid and you're in waters where you don't have those toothy critters if you don't have to have the exact rod setup it helps it definitely helps but if you wanted to you know mess around with it you could do go with a heavy like your frog rod for example that'd be a good one yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying so if you want to just kind of dabble in it and try it without spend a lot of money mm -hmm. you know it's a, you can still i like that, that a lot that's a yeah. guys that's a that's a tip that's a really great mm -hmm. tip and oh my goodness uh okay we got guys you guys are killing me tonight Shh, don't uh, tell everyone about the spy bait uh let's see share share what have you thought about a live studio audience when you're at jake's yeah. i would come in watch then buy new gear yes if this wasn't tonight, <laughs> if this wasn't like literally six minutes ago i decided to do this yes and let me on that note too because uh like he said earlier, Odenkirk just leaving, you know, 30 years, over 30 years with Virginia Department of uh, Wildlife Resources. And even like before the camera starts running, like just it's mind blowing the stuff that mm -hmm. talking about Lake Manassas and yeah. that, that wasn't on the episode. But a live audience, I like the idea. Because oh, I love the, the idea. The, yeah knowledge that you get the insight and the information, the backstories on stuff that you'll not hear, you'll not see in the magazine, you won't see on the website that's pretty cool and then you're, you're getting it on the web on the channel also the podcast but um Ooh. it's an interesting thing in live studio chris yes we're gonna do that uh and i guess it's a good time for this announcement tomorrow night we are having a special live stream at 7 p.m i'll be back in studio and i'm going to be going over like the future of fishing the dmv kind of our plans mm -hmm. for the future and all that stuff because i want to do that the other big thing was the call-in show people love the idea to be able to call in I want to get that done. All these things will be getting done. We're going to be getting it figured out. Uh, let's see. Wait, what is the minimum order to place for free shipping from Jake's? I don't know if we have that yet. Uh, might be something to come in the future. That's new to us right now, David. Uh, I mean, we're doing it. Uh, online store where she's Jenny and, and her son, Nick, or Zach, rather. They're continuing to get product on there. So 
uh, just to cover cost right now, you know, there is a, a charge on that, but if we get bigger, uh, we could, we could eventually go to that. So something we'll think it's, about. It's in the process right yeah. now. Uh, I think we're new to it. So how many years have you been doing us. this? So like, the online. store online's only been probably less than a year. Less than a year. Like if we got special requests, you know, we would on instant messenger or whatever, we would, you know, obviously put stuff in the mail for people, but actually putting stuff online, it's, it's not even a year that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. it. So this is so, growing and expanding. Yeah. And so as this gets bigger and the online footprint gets, but gets we appreciate your support too. Like yeah. it's been awesome. We love our customers. And then let's see, we got, oh, we got right here. We got ripping lips. Hi, Marty. How you doing? I really hope everything's going good at your end. Um, you know, he really supports mm -hmm. monster bass. There's a massive event that he's putting on with monster bass for our veterans. That's coming up guys. Mm -hmm. Really go check out his channel and what he's doing over there. Um, let's get back to the baits. Um, I will go next. Largemouth. If you're fishing any grass this time of year, speedworm, zoom, pumpkin, that's all you need to know. Um, you're going to you're gonna hit this two ways. You're going to go a weedless EWG-style hook 3 out with a very light sinker, and then you're going to dye the tip of the tail with a little bit of chartreuse, just enough to get a little bit of a flicker. This thing is completely weedless, and what's so great about this bait, and I like the Swiss Army knife. I think the swim jig is Swiss Army knife. You can do so many things with it. I can take mm -hmm. a swim jig. I can still flip it under a dock if I mm -hmm. want to. What's so nice about this, this is a topwater bait, and if I put a little bit heavier head on it, all of a sudden, I'm working the submerged weed line. Mm. This thing will get bit right now. You'll catch largemouth, you'll catch smallmouth, and you'll catch snake on this mm -hmm. bad boy this will kill on the potomac with this grass being mm -hmm. up right now throw this anywhere that you have grass the res if you're dealing with water willow it's the same thing that'll absolutely kill with all that as well um i'm gonna go through a couple more here because mm -hmm. i got a huge pile this i'm gonna, all right you know what, i'm gonna get to the goods first guys i'm gonna hit you with the goods first this is what won me the tournament on big slack mm -hmm. this was the this was the juice it was the i don't even, i don't i have like a thousand of these pile the micro trd for some reason, they wanted the micro TRD or the micro tube. Usually it was the micro TRD that was, was getting me the bigger bites. I was throwing this mm -hmm. on a medium light Dobbins rod. And then I took that with a five pound Sunline fluorocarbon leader. I went down to five pound test to get the bite. Then what I had to do weight wise to be able to get the casting distance, because these fish are very spooky of the boat. So what I would do is I'd go with a one eighth to one fourth ounce high tech head. And I think this is the number two. I, I had a number one hook size on there that set up. And then the last part of this whole thing, I don't even know how to say this damn thing. It's, it's the crawl formula for Baku. I think it's, is it Baku? Bak? It's the crawfish Bang. scent. Bang. Bang. I don't know why I called it Baku. <laughs> Don't know English, apparently. So do not, I don't know, don't Google Baku, but it's bang. The crayfish bang is absolutely killer with that thing. Um, then with this setup here, you cast it out and you're dragging it along the bottom as painfully slow as possible. If you set the hook, and this is important with the drag, I fish a lot of five and four pound test uh, leader material. You want to crank that drag to when you set the hook, it lets out a little bit. And here's here's mm. a power tip, guys. This is the juice for what I do. When you set that hook, if that fish goes crazy, it's probably six inches long. A mm. small mouth, generally, if it's a little run, he's going to start shooting all over the place, and everyone wants to like treat it like it's a monster. It's not. If you set the hook, and you might feel one head shake, but all of a sudden, he just starts swimming off at that point loosen your drag up because that is a four or five pound smallmouth. Hmm. those smallmouth, for some reason those big ones when you set the hook on them they do not know on that lighter so that they're hooked right away interesting and they'll start walking off and then when you apply pressure then they'll start running on you with this lighter setup you're using your drag i learned this a couple episodes ago and i for, forgive me it was the new river guide that had this and it's so important a small mouth will only pull as hard as you do against him they're going to jump if you do like what my wife did and you push the rod tip straight up to a satellite, that thing will go probably not as high as the one she did, but it's going to go straight up out of the water. Set your drag and let the smallmouth fight itself against the drag. If it wants to just go all over the place, that's fine. You're going to tire it out and get it to the boat. And what's crazy is I have not lost a smallmouth this year fishing this setup. And Every smallmouth I've put in the boat this year has been above average size on the upper Potomac at big slack. I'm fishing slow. I'm letting them eat it, setting the hook, dialing back the drag and just playing them. So mm. I think that's very important for that, that whole mm. setup there guys. So 
Um, oh, you have some bags to talk about. Yeah. So as a non boater, uh, typically I'm fishing with Brian, you know, in our tournaments and stuff, I've gone through different ways to organize tackle and you know, tackle organization. One of the things I would do, I would take, if I borrow your bags, I would take like, like things and I would do, use a D ring that I got at Lowe's and I would run it through, you know, here. So I keep them all together. Ooh, know, that's really good. Crawls yeah. or my, you know, whatever I had. And I did that for a while and that, that worked for a while. And then, you know, trying to find a, a decent bag and those people use Ziploc bags, which work. You don't have to spend a bunch of money, but six cents. I came across these um, on Tackle Warehouse, and I bought them because that's the other thing too. I like to try things out before yeah, we bring them course. in to see if, if you know, as part of the recommendation. And that's what is that six eight ninety nine for a small bag right here? Six cents. Uh, what I like about it, they've got a nice zipper, uh, which I think is important um, to put again light baits in there. You can also label them right here. It's clear, so you're going to be able to see what's in here. And then you also have the bigger size here. And again, we have these at Jake's now. Uh, so if tackle organization and color coded at the top also, uh, and I put these, you know, either in his boat, I have them in a bag, but then I'll just take those and put them in a boat. I know a lot of anglers that are, that are even not just a non-boater in your own boat mm -hmm. to organize your tackle. That's what this I use. Is kind of, and different brands out there, different manufacturers, different quality, but I have found that I really like this. And so we have these also at Jake's um, for tackle organization, which I think is important. Huge, 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 got huge. You a lot of tackle over here. I, I you have a, a lot. You got to be able to organize that. I have and, a ton of tackle. I, I mean, just you could do a whole episode just on that, really, oh, technically. Oh, my goodness. We could actually do that. Um, and then from the kayak guys, I just saw NV, Northern Virginia Kayak mm -hmm. Bass Anglers just said, morning, gents. We are now a, we've been for a while, but we are a Torquedo supplier. Uh, wait, we supply Torquedos now at Jake's Bay and Tackle. You know, if you're fishing mm -hmm. the river, having a Torquedo is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. This will be a great place you can order. And we also have a sure. massive selection of kayak accessories mm -hmm. now. All of the, the, we have the black box. We have so mm -hmm. many Yak Attack Yak accessories. Yak Attack, kind of Farmville, Virginia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crazy. So if you guys need accessories for your kayak, right now we're one of the only shops in the area that has that. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big deal. And getting yourself a leash for your kayak. I see so many kids right now because it's summertime, so they're not in school yet. They're out there walking the river. Get yourself mm -hmm. a leash or something. Yak Attack makes one, I believe, mm -hmm. too. So that way you can pull that kayak behind you and, and stay safe. Um, yep. So I got three baits left, guys. And then I am done ski here for the night. Uh, we got, wait, what's this? Brian, don't. Uh, you don't need bags, Jerry. You already fish on a floating. So anybody knows shot. Brian Brown, he has a lot of stuff in that Ranger. But you know, one thing that made him happy is when he heard he felt like he had a problem, like an addiction. You know, mm -hmm. until somebody once told him, said, you know, anglers are collectors, and so once you realize <laughs> you're a collector, it makes it okay to have all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know? You're a collector. My problem is my lunch too. So this also can double as a snack bag. Dude, that's clutch. That's in, clutch. So I like my snacks fluke oh perfect love it if you were fishing for smallmouth right now on the upper potomac or the shenandoah you're gonna go i think this is the, this is the tiny fluke yeah this is the tiny fluke size bait fish color nose hook it um you can mm. even use a weedless hook it's gonna give it insane erratic mm. action on the surface it's gonna generate some strikes and this is mm. great in that shallow water times mm. you can also do it weedless now here is the juice guys two uh, a year ago the guy that won the all-star the all-american on the upper Potomac or on the tidal river on the tidal Potomac river, who won the BFL all-star, he won it on a black frog because the crayfish he saw were black. Interesting. Something else that works that I have done to win many tournaments when they're black, a black fluke, mm. a big black fluke. You can throw that. And this is the setup here. And again, I'm going to get people in a lot of trouble with this. You're going to get a, a, the heaviest spinning rod you can get away with. And you can get the biggest diameter reel, like a 500 series. And you're going to go with 30 to 40 pound braid and a four to four to three aught EWG style hook. Get yourself a big black Senko. You can go with green pumpkin by like the black. If you cast that out there on those floating mats of, of hydrilla and mill foil on the Potomac, not only do you have the casting distance, what's so great about a fluke versus a frog is this will sink in the holes. Yes. You can fish it on the surface through the pads, but then what happens is those those fish that were watching that thing are so used to a frog sitting on the surface. That thing's going to drop right in front of their face, and you're going to get bites that people that are just throwing a frog are missing. Mm -hmm. Please try that. Now, another little tip on this. I, I'm glad you said that because this is going to be my go-to this year with different sizes. Now, I like to Texas rig it myself, and uh, I'll put a nail weight in the nose, a little bit bigger on this, like a bigger one. 
uh, nail weight in the nose. And then the other thing mm. I like, it, and also a ring. Sometimes I like those hooks that have a ring on it because, again, that will give you a little more of this. And like you're saying, you can fish at all levels of water column. When you're fishing the, uh, like, logs and brush piles and stuff, that thing will go right down in the middle of it and a jerk you know, weedless Texas yeah. style, it'll come right out. And then you can also, if you're twitching that thing along the top, that top water, oh, anytime they, when you see they're hitting the top, that's what they're doing. They're, they're going up the top and they're just feeding. And so that great, great choice. I'm going to, this is one of the ones I'm it's, going to commit to more this oh, year. It's so, it's so freaking good. good. And and then guys, these are my last two. Um, let's see. I don't need to we got that. Uh, we got a couple comments here. Uh, they're not collecting. They're just educational displays. There you go. I like that. Well, that you, too. Using these words will keep you out of trouble with the significant other. Right. I will use that except she's watching the show right now. Just throw their uh, shoes back. Baku, in. you can say that. Yeah. Bang. Yeah, I know. I don't speak English well. And sadly, that's my first language. Um, bubblegum flukes work on the tidal Potomac as well. Ooh, right. I didn't even think about that. So last two smallmouth baits, because apparently I was on the smallmouth bench right now. Um, mm -hmm. this right here, I think this is the fishing complete. Yeah, the fishing, com the fishing complete or the Z-Man tickler. Either one of these smaller profile stick worms right now, weightless with a three out EWG style hook. You can even go with a two out if you want to. I like the three because it gives it a little bit more weight, but you can go with a two or a one depending. Throwing this weightless through riffles right now and pools will absolutely catch the biggest fish that swims in that area. This one right here is absolutely deadly. If if I'm throwing that that Ned Rig style setup in the deeper pools, if I'm throwing the shallower riffles, I'm hitting them with this. Now, the last thing, the last thing that I'm going to experiment with, it, and then I'm done talking for the night. Can't beat it. This was the this was basically crack. The the gulp minnows right now. If you take this and you get your small jig head of your mm -hmm. choice. This thing in live scope will catch everything that swims. It, I am shocked right now when I was trying to figure out live scope for the first time and what I was seeing. I put this on a little jig hook because what's crazy is I've caught catfish. I've caught um, perch, smallmouth, largemouth. Anything that's in the water will eat this thing. Yeah, that's as close as you're going to get to the live minnow. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But this is the worst when it comes to how long they last. Correct. It's probably one or two fish and they're dead. You made the can the canisters may be a little bit better. Ooh, top, canisters, yes. But you're right. And don't leave that on your hook overnight. That's, that's It'll a very good point. Be hard as rock. That's a very good point. And then guys, I mean, that's all I have. Oh, we got one more question before we kind of wrap it up here uh for the evening. Jared, do you guys have any deer hair jigs in the shop? Best thing ever for smallies. Maine native here to tell you. Yeah, Marty, we do. Uh, again, Roger, he's been tying those for us for a long time. It's a small little deer hair jig with a little trailer on the back. It's dynamite on the Shenandoah, especially in the wintertime, cold, mm -hmm. cold uh, months there. Um, you know, back to that one comment real quick, too. You were talking about fishing the DMV, comment about live. Want to just, I'm going to throw this out here. I don't, it's not finalized. Uh, but those that know Jake's from the beginning, there it is. It's it started out on Welltown Road, and the, it was probably only 400 square foot. I think it was very very small. Dad opened it just to see if this would work, um, if people were interested. Uh, that was 10 years ago, and so he moved from there after about three years. We've been here about seven uh, in 4,000 square foot um, out Rutherford Crossing. Um, so we're in talks looking at going back to Welltown Road, if anybody's familiar with that area, back close to the original place, but there's a building that's that may be coming available, uh, the old Dollar Stretcher building next to the U-Haul. Uh, that would take us from 4,000 square foot to 7,000 square foot of retail mm. space. The other half, the actual Dollar Stretcher, 7,000 square foot, kind of chopped up, but we're looking at that um, as an area to uh, do more educational uh, seminars, uh, it would be perfect for what he was mentioning as far as a live, you know, studio audience like type of thing like this. Um, so anyway, just want to throw that out there. If you come, if it does happen, it's not been finalized yet, but if it does happen, the move would be looking to be between Christmas and New Year's of this year. And so I just throw that out there too. So if somebody comes by here, you know, first of the year and this is closed, it hasn't closed down it's just moved and so relocated. Well, well, let's let's make that let's make that a little tighter so what you're saying is there's a chance that jake's bait tackle have a bigger better location bigger better location so that means more stuff more stuff um like looking at potentially kayaks maybe like 100 oh, percent you know yeah. just yeah more stuff more mm. fishing and that's one thing i do like too that 
it's all things fishing. Um, you know, we've agreed not to bring in anything else as far as a hunting line you could, but we want to just focus on fishing, all things fishing. Mm -hmm. So, and try to cater to, you know, the bank fisherman, the kayaker, the cat fisherman, the small mouth, the large mouth lakes, you know, all, all things fishing basically. So that guys means if you got and guys, everyone say their prayer sign. If this works, that means we're going to have one of the biggest, the biggest tackle stores in the area. And one of the only places we're going to be the closest place located to the Shenandoah river that sells kayaks, the main stem. Like that's impressive. Yes. Like all that could be possible. Do we have time to, I know there was two comments here. Oh my, about we have the, as much time. Yeah. I don't have to go home. And before Chris Johnson's comment, I don't want to like skip over it. Cause I do want to talk to this real quick. Um, Which one? Let's go up a little more, a little more, a little more. Keep going. There was keep going. There he's right there. The, uh, I don't know how to say his name. I don't get why all the companies, especially Spro mm. on up, go all the way up. Like uh, don't scroll up right uh, there. Here we right go. There. There's two comments here, this one and the next one. Um, don't get it why all this company, especially Spro, Berkeley Gambler, Copy, other small. So we did, I did an ICAST article for Woods and Waters. Uh, we were down at ICAST and um, didn't hear about it down there. Didn't catch wind down there. But um, yes, the Berkeley Nessie ended up winning, you know, best in show type thing or best in its category. Um and then when I was, I was doing the article and doing a little research, I came across um, the, I believe it's uh, Grow, Grow Outdoors. I think it's a Japanese company, not Grow Outdoors, Grow something. But anyway, they are saying that they, you know, came out with that soft, um, soft glide bait first, right? So, um, and I know Mike Buka had made a comment, those in the swim bait uh, area will know more about this, but I will tell you, like, um, and you go down to the Chris Johnson's to mm -hmm, right uh, know another company, uh, exactly that I cast winner and it's not Berkeley. Um, and so what I want to say to this is this too, like we always stay neutral from the standpoint. We don't know. We reached out to Scott Castleberry, our Berkeley rep. He reached out to the engineers. Um, you know, that, that is a, and I've told Thomas that this would be a topic, you know, kind of a controversial topic as far as this industry is made up of, and I'm not taking sides one way or the other. And I get, I'm, I kind of am the small and favoring the small guy, you know, mm -hmm. if you will, but, um, the underdog, but it's, it's, it's a tough industry from the standpoint of everything is copied everything. Like the only thing that I saw that was ever really patented that I've seen was, was, the Z-Man chatterbait. chatterbait and all they had a patent on was how that blade was attached mm -hmm. to the head was my understanding. And so now since then you've had, you know, slobber knocker and different things. So I'm, I, I understand where people are coming from and I get the idea. We've had the conversation here. I, I talked to my sister about it. She reached out to Berkeley. You know, we've, we're, we look at it, we're staying neutral, but the point is I do understand if you were the person that came out with this, you designed it, you worked two or three years and put invested in it and your money in it and all these things for you know a bigger company to come in and just uh and go ahead and that's the feds trying try about to uh spro was a collab not a ripoff okay but so uh, i think go ahead no and and so we've had nico on the show and and, and nico talked Rogue about this and, yeah and guys like it, it's corporate america for christ's sake this happens yes. they they, they if you're going for your morality in corporate America, guys, I have a beach in Arizona to sell you. Yes, of course they do this. Why is this yeah. a surprise? It's been going on forever. This is just the big indictment now. In two years, there's going to be another one. I it, Who cares? It, it, it's two big companies complaining. I'm going to give you another scenario, too, and I'm going to use the, the example of, uh, and I know you probably got to wrap up here, but um, – the when green top some people remember the 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 small green top and then when they bought the gander built and the gander building they went in i talked to somebody from green top that worked there that actually i think got a degree from tech marketing degree and they talked about it. he said they told us this in class but he got to experience it firsthand as soon as they signed that deal or right after they signed the deal to go into this bigger space scared to death bass pro shop moved into town and it's like oh my god bass pro is going to bury us but what they said was somebody that big can actually help your your growth as mm -hmm. well because the national advertising is going to bring people to richmond oh by the way let's go over here to green top because it's only five miles down the road right never thought about it they saw their sales go up because of bass pro shop okay all i want to say to that too another thing i just thought right or wrong grow design lures they're they're now getting more publicity mm -hmm. because berkeley because of what happened now i'm not saying it's right 
Uh, but I'm just saying, and I've always said, I know people that are worried about being knocked off, keep being you, keep doing you, keep doing your thing and good things are going to happen. So, yeah. I, and also, and this is just something just from dealing with corporate America, being in business for myself for so long, having my dad deal with a lot of this stuff, you run into an issue and this, this happened with, with the Z man again. So guys, if you don't know Bass Talk Live, they did a documentary with the guy that created the Chatterbait. It was called the million dollar idea. Fantastic documentary where he talks about the litigation and lawsuits and things like that. And here's, this is just the reality of the situation. If you're going to be a business owner and you, and you're not doing an intellectual property where it's you. So example is mm -hmm. they can't rip off you. A classic example of this is Joe Rogan or me fishing the DMV. There's nothing to steal because you can't That's steal right. me. But when you have an idea like the chatterbait, the problem is if you have a massive corporation, the only way you can defend your patent is to go to court. Mm -hmm. That's where they can get a lot of these people is they have the money, even though mm -hmm. they might lose, they know they'll lose. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is like, yeah, we'll go to court and lose, but can you afford 6 million? Mm -hmm. We can. And that's the kind of the game they play. And I've had somebody on the show, actually on the show, reach out to me. I had a phone call conversation because he has an idea. And I told him like, listen, just understand if your idea does blow up, when you have the ability to sell it, you got to sell it because what will happen is they're going to figure out a way to strong arm your idea. And so at the peak, sell it off and get what you can, unless you can partner up like the guy with the chatterbait. He yes. partnered up with Z-Man. That's correct. If he didn't partner up with Z-Man, he would have financially gone bankrupt. And the documentary said that because he said, yes. I do not have the money to litigate the patents. That's right. And I think a lot of people don't understand this because no one's self-employed and mm -hmm. understands like that inner workings. Mm -hmm. But you guys, you guys understand that when you go to ICAST and stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of the nature of the And that's what business. John Cruz did with Missile with, yeah. uh, you know, Hog Farmer. And the other one was, uh, who's the big drop shot um, company where they collabed. And that's what Jennifer was trying to say, too. There's a collaboration in here, too. And I'm, I'm going to tell you another something I learned um, from an article, Bassmaster article, where it's kind of like even take your crankbaits, for example. Uh, back in the day, you know, that balsa wood, they was nothing for a guy to throw you a thing of balsa wood and say, here, carve me out a, you know, design, right? So the, the same one would be a cotton cordell or, mm -hmm. you know, all these different things that we're, we're familiar with. Sometimes it was, it was, if not the same guy, there was collaboration going on behind the scenes and they just put a name on it to sell it. Because at the end of the day, your point is very good too. At the end of the day, the industry is about the, about the money, mm -hmm. like, I mean, we're not here to make money, but you have to make money to keep the doors yeah. open. But I'm saying the difference between making money and actually selling a product and helping people catch fish. Um, no, uh, so, 100%. I mean, the industry can be a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And, then, and guys, I want to answer all these questions before we go. And I also shout out, we've been hovering between 29 and 40 people. And the first time we did a live stream, you know, 17 weeks ago we had like four or five people, but because we haven't missed a Monday in mm -hmm. 17 weeks, oh, we're up to 29 to 40 people live viewing this at one time. It's absolutely amazing. And the amount of questions is just absolutely, we're going to blow up here, but this one, I there's two here. I want to hit first. This one's important. Uh, David uh, Van Doren. I hope I pronounced that right. I apologize. Small. I can't speak English. So glad to hear you guys are carrying torpedoes. I have a 403 and I'm thinking about getting a one, a 1103. Yes, they're a big Torquedo supplier. I When I get a Torquedo on the boat, on my kayak, not my boat, I'm going to get it from from these guys. I know, bud, you had another question Let as well. Let me say real quick, too, to Go for preference it. that we got, we only have one in the shop, but we can, um, we've got like Jeff Little, for example, too. If you let us know what you want, we can, we can even mm -hmm. drop ship that to your, yeah. to your location. So we don't have, don't show up here thinking you're going to see a, a big line of torpedoes right now. And it might happen in the future. But and that might yes. happen at the new store, but that right. segues into your next Correct. question uh, fr from the same guy. I just caught the tail end of the conversation about you guys possibly moving. What would the new address be if you guys were moving again, guys? So this is not a bad thing. It's a positive. It's a bigger store, more merch, if that happens, we will drop the link. Oh, you want to drop the link in the episode description or something like that? Um, it we've got some time. Just keep an eye. Watch yeah. our social media and stuff. We'll, we'll be letting you. If know. it happens, it'll be in January of next year. New Year to January of next year. You got plenty of time where the place comes, but it'll still be in the Winchester area as well. Um, the next thing, Green Top supports local folks uh, to go to Green Top. I spent better tackle. Yeah, yep. Yeah, they're they're also very very good as well. Yeah, they're better than Bass Pro Shop. Yeah, I agree. That's three thirty. Three thirty Welltown Road was was that. Three thirty Welltown road and rip it marty i understand what you're saying about green top and jake's compared to like a bass pro shop i think it's something about when you get these more local shops they carry more 
niche supplies for the area yeah. compared to a and Bass it's Pro important Shop. to say real quick too we I, I shop at dick's i'll shop at, at the academy or sportsman warehouse here locally i, I don't I, I bass pro shop i do love you know the smaller ones we're never anti anything if we don't have it we're going to find a place that you can get it mm-hmm. uh, because that's what it's all about it's not about a competition Let's see. We're gonna get we're gonna get a couple more of these questions done, and then we're gonna be done because that's what happens when we go on a rant. And the questions: Spro swim bait came a year. Copy the guy making the inside of the garage swim bait. I I wait a year to get my bait. Now he has cans to see all the companies to copy them. It's a shame. And this is not gonna happen. I saw some comment. I don't know where it's about glide baits. This is gonna be harder to do with the glide baits because of how they're manufactured. Legit glide baits, like you know the the one thousand yeah. dollar one online, because those those are handcrafted. That's not gonna be an issue. It's gonna be with these designs where they try to mass produce them. Um, let's try to get through here. here, here do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. I'm going to drive the extra 30 minutes both ways to come to Jake's. We got Robo, Robo Worm. That was one I was looking for earlier. That Thanks, was one. Brian. Uh, let's see. Glad with John Cruz. D and S Lures and the Scrounger. Same thing with mm-hmm. John Hendricks. Absolutely. I'm going to have to do. Scrounger's another good choice. Scrounger is a re- good really good choice. Guys, I'm also going to do this because I know, I knew this was going to happen someday. Like I'm going to have to do a catch up show just for the show itself when it comes to questions here. Um, okay. These are good. Six inch chat. Come on guy. Uh, everyone. Oh, so what you're seeing Ray is so right now I am broadcasting on multiple platforms. So what it what I'm seeing is the collective of how many people are on here. You're seeing on your end just the people that are watching from that platform. So if you're seeing 16 in the chat with 10 likes, that's just on YouTube. That doesn't count Facebook as well and all the other platforms. So that's a weird feature on your end. Uh, everyone smash the thumbs up button. I really appreciate that. Great stuff. Jake's a great I like the smaller stores. 100% less. Do you carry local bait makers? Uh, yeah, Marty, you know we carry local bait makers. We've just been talking about that, boss man. Yeah, of course we are. I thought there was one yeah, question right. we missed that was important. Uh, a black, or, or, yeah, okay. Brian Henry just brought that up there too. Uh, I think this is it. Yep. So Brian, Brian dropped that as well, guys. So that's that's going to be the new address. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there one that we missed? I thought there was one that we missed. I think that's everything, isn't it? And again, that's yep. as long as everything goes through. Don't want to. I didn't want to throw it out too soon, but also we're getting closer. So if it, it happens, just you know it's in the works. Um, yeah, and then and guys, yeah, please please uh, support your local bait makers and your tackle shops compared to your bass pro shops, things like that. And fishing the um, DMV, guys. This is what you're doing, Thomas. I mean, and you're like he said earlier, it's you're you're consistent with your content, and uh, you're doing a lot of great things for the fishing industry. Oh, well, hopefully we're doing Appreciate something you. good. Uh, closing thoughts. Thank you, thank you for this and. You know, you're how old are you? You're about a year and a half now. You're in a couple months. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have our two year anniversary this November, guys. Um, Sweet. And I was for our thing tomorrow, going over our stats. We've had 160 podcast episodes in that time. We've wow. grown over a thousand subscribers. We have 37,000 hours watched. Crazy. So think about that: 37,000 hours of watch. We have over 57,000 downloads. And that is from Tennessee, New England, Japan, for some reason. We have a couple of downloads in Japan, mm. um, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, and the D.C. area. It's absolutely crazy. And something I was telling um, Jared about before the show, this was on the Joe Love so you should, you should check that out. When we had that big uh, industrial netting thing that happened during the BFL mm-hmm. in the spring, Joe mentioned that we were one of the reasons that he went out there to check it out because yep. the video clip I made of, I think it was, uh, uh Cia John, C- mm-hmm. Celia, Celia. Yeah. I can't speak. Yep. Any- yeah. Celia Johnson. She, she shot a beautiful, mm-hmm. good image quality with her iPhone of them netting. Mm-hmm. I used that and packaged that into a short that went viral and people tagged him in it enough. It forced him to check it out. Mm-hmm. So we are slowly getting the ability to push DWR and mm-hmm. say like, Hey, we're big enough to do something. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, that was like Charlie Taylor with his fishing report, where mm-hmm. he he used the old newspaper to mm-hmm. make things happen. We're becoming that source where we can have an Odenkirk on and say, like, is this the right decision? Mm-hmm. And you guys are making that possible that we can hold them accountable mm-hmm. and make that happen. And you're following up with a Halliker too. I mean, and another great one. That I one's mean, huge. And you're, and you're getting Maryland. You're, what yep. I like too, you got Virginia, Maryland, I think Pennsylvania in there. So you're you're getting your content. You're you're covering a lot of area, and that's really cool too. It's it's. I'm excited to hear about yeah. the new the hatchery and in, in Front Royal. So mm-hmm, I mean, I think that's fun. probably going to be on that episode. Um, so again, just hats off to you, Thomas, um, for everything you're doing, and Carly out there too. Your wife. I yep, mean, thank you for all the short content, flipping, but she's producing a lot of great short content so we appreciate her as well so and then, it's a great community and chris this is the last thing chris i'm i'm messaging you this week to get you back on the show i'm glad you're really feeling better again guys uh 
7 p.m. tomorrow, live stream show uh, back at my headquarters. We're going to do a special announcement, future of Fishing the DMV, where we're going with the channel. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out in the algorithm. And we're going to see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. You're Bye. listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.